Ethiopia, Africa's oldest independent country and the cradle of an ancient civilization, is fast emerging as one of the big rice producing countries in sub Saharan Africa. Although rice has just been recently introduced to Ethiopia, recognizing its importance as a food security crop and a source of income and employment opportunities, the government of Ethiopia has named it the Millennium Crop and has ranked it among the priority commodities of the country. Until a few years ago, the staple food crops in Ethiopia were maize, wheat, sorghum, and teff. Teff is a fine grain, unique to the country, which is used for making a traditional Ethiopian bread called injera. Rice started to be recognized in the country because of its good productivity, available labor, and vast areas suitable for both rain-fed and irrigated systems. Farmers have adapted this crop as a food crop, as a food security crop. There is a lot of area for rice, there is sunshine, there is water, and in addition, uh, the rice trade has been uh, growing very fast. So According to Dr. Terry K. Bayre, special advisor for rice at the Agriculture Transformation Agency in Ethiopia, the rice sector in the country saw a phenomenal growth from 2005 to 2010. Rice area is estimated to have increased from 6,000 hectares in 2005 to nearly 222,000 hectares in 2010, and production from 15,460 tons to 887,400 tons. At the same time, the number of rice farmers is estimated to have increased from 18,000 to more than 565,000. A national rice research and development strategy for 2010 to 2019 has been prepared to tackle rice-related progress in rice value chain, post-harvest, grain quality, and marketing issues. In Ethiopia, about 30 million hectares are suitable for rice, according to the National Rice Research and Development Strategy. Fertile soils, or black clay soils, are abundant in the country and have a high agricultural potential. But, these are difficult to work with as they are hard when dry and sticky when wet. Uh, this varieties are just introduced here in Ethiopia. Then we get some seeds from those varieties. This seeds has to reach to the farmers. The problem is just the seed. For that uh, problem, I think we have to train the farmers. By Ubele Abera. National Rice Research Coordinator at Adet Agricultural Research Center in Bahir Dhar explained that during the rainy season farmers used to abandon the waterlogged vertizals in the food garret plains, a major rice belt in northwestern Ethiopia. But when farmers saw that rice grows well under waterlogged conditions, they have switched to this crop in the rainy season and have become prosperous since then. <laughs> Rice has also become popular because it can be used to make many valuable byproducts such as rice husk, rice bran, and beer. It can also partially or fully replace teff in the making of injera. Thanks to active rice research and development activities and with strong support from the Ethiopian government, Sasakawa Global 2000, and the Japan International Cooperation Agency, farmers have access to several improved varieties and crop management techniques. Sasakawa Global 2000 introduced Nireka rice varieties from the Africa Rice Center. In the last few years, Nireka 1, Nireka 2, Nireka 3, Nireka 4, and Supari Kata 1 have been released for upland ecologies and Nireka 14, Nireka 15, and Nireka 16 for irrigated ecologies. In addition, various other improved varieties, such as Shibel, Goat 1, and Houghton have been released for irrigated systems. Among the traditional varieties, farmers continued to grow X Jigna, which was introduced by the North Koreans for the rain fed lowlands. However, since much of the arable land in the country is located in mid to high altitudes, cold tolerant rice varieties are essential for these areas. As part of the Eri, Africa rice, 
joint project namely Stress Tolerant Rice for Africa in South Asia, Straw Saw Project. Researchers, like Dr. Nagusi Zena, from Africa Rice, are focusing on developing cold tolerant rice varieties for such regions in partnership with the Ethiopian Institute of Agricultural Research and the Amhara Region Agricultural Research Institute. As a result of this work, two cold tolerant varieties have been selected. Fofefa 3737, from the Madagascar National Program released in 2010, for the Irrigated Ecology and WAB 189, from Africa Rise released in 2011, for Rainfed Lowlands. The Rainfed WAB, uh, uh, it's, it's assuming fortunately, <laughs> fortunately this WAB has been released for the Rainfed, but it is also one of the treatments under the cold tolerance. The characteristic uh, that we consider for the release of these varieties is, uh, is that uh, the, the variety is early maturing, high yield, and the biomass is very high because the biomass is very, very important as well as that of the grain in this environment, in this area. According to Dr. Tadassi Lake Hugh, rice breeder at Audet Center, farmers showed great interest in Wawak 189 because of its earliness, acceptable grain quality, high yield, and good biomass. Dr. Lake Hugh is among the new generation of young African rice scientists who are trained through the Africa Rice Breeding Task Force. This task force has been launched to build the rice breeding capacity of national partners and stimulate the delivery of improved technologies through strong partnership between international and national rice scientists. Such partnership will be vital to realizing the Ethiopian government's plan to raise paddy production to about 4 million tons in 2019 and increase rice area to 774,000 hectares. <laughs>